This video is general advice to help build your personal brand in esports. Please note if you are under the age of 18, there is more you need to be aware of when you're online. Make sure you refer to the British Esports Parent and Carer Guide with more details about keeping safe online. Hello everybody, I'm Will from Hitmark and I'm really excited to be working with the British Esports Association today to talk to you about how you can help build your personal brand online when it comes to esports, of course having a brand for yourself and being able to network and have a persona online is very, very important. As we said at the beginning of this video, make sure to check with a carer or parent if you're under the age of 18, because there will be more that you do need to consider when it comes to this advice. We'll mention it a couple of times as we go through, but just to keep that in mind. So without further ado, let's get into some of our top tips for building a really great personal brand on social media. The basics here, generally when it comes to um, your social media game, is you want to have a completed profile um, as far as you're comfortable. So the more information that you provide or the more things that you have on your profile, the more likely people are gonna get the information that they need about you. Again, don't feel obliged to add absolutely everything and you don't need to go super deep into every single piece of information. So for example, where something asks for your location, putting your country is generally fine. Having a profile picture, again, if you're comfortable having a profile picture, it's good to put a face to the name and people will be more willing to interact with you if you've got a picture of yourself, just because there are some people online who are either bots or they're doing other stuff online and they're not necessarily being actors that people want to employ. Do you want to have a professional-ish picture on your social media or something that represents you? If you've got a very fun brand, you want to be smiling, happy, all of this stuff, keep it professional and keep it comfortable for you and make sure that you're aware of social media privacy settings because there will be options for you to give more information to those people you trust. If they're connected with you, if they're your friends online or social, certain social media, then always feel free to go into those settings and change it so that people just coming across your profile won't be able to see your location, your age, anything like that that you choose to add. Also, when it comes to understanding settings, make sure that you understand how to use stuff like the block function, how to use the report functions on social media, because if you are seeing things that you don't want to be seeing, whether it's a case of seeing things that you're just uncomfortable with, right on through to stuff like harassment, which unfortunately does happen, you want to make sure that you know, A, how to stop yourself seeing that, and B, how to prevent people who are doing it from doing it to anyone else. So make sure you keep those in mind and check out all of the guidance that those social media will give you in their setting. How to interact publicly on social media. The first thing you want to generally do is be positive, right? Social media is a great way of interacting with people and um, showing off your best quality. Um, you don't want to be putting your entire life on social media. This isn't a case of you having to be super happy at all times and not being honest on social media. You can decide to do that however much you want to share. That's up to you. Remember to keep in mind that all of this is public. So even if there's someone in the scene that you're not uh, especially fond of or there's someone that you don't get on with that well, don't go negatively interacting with that person. Focus on the things that you can be doing to elevate yourself and those around you. You don't have to be best mates with everyone on social media or within esports. That's never going to be possible. But try and interact more with the people that are gonna make you happy and that you're gonna be able to create positive interactions and content with than focusing on the negative um, where at all possible. You want to be focusing on yourself primarily. So you want to be building yourself up, talking about things that you're doing. That's what brands are looking for when they're reaching out to you, when they're looking at your kind of thing on social media. They don't, if they're looking at your page, if you're wanting to get into esports, they want to see about you. They want to learn about you. And if you're just interacting with other people, they might think that you're not someone who wants to work in esports especially, but more that you're just a fan or someone online. So you want to be focusing on yourself. Don't spam, but don't be a ghost. If you've got social media and you're not posting on it, why are you? Why have you got that social media then? If you're not going to be interacting or doing anything on it, it's not going to be working for you. It's not going to be achieving very much for you at all. So you definitely want to be using it, but don't be spamming. Don't be tweeting every five minutes. Don't be interacting with every single tweet that you see from anyone in esports because that's not really achieving very much. If you're posting stuff super often and that's just flooding timelines, that's how you get yourself muted, that's how you get yourself unfollowed. And if people in the industry aren't seeing you tweet, they're not seeing your success. They're not seeing how much you're bringing to the table. It's fine to go several days without posting anything on social media. I do it all the time but you don't want to be going weeks and weeks and months without interacting with people, without reminding people what your services are, what you bring to the table. Because then, again, 
your social media is not going to be doing any work for you. And finally the classic, don't be toxic. There's no need to be going after other people, being negative to other people, we've mentioned it already, but it's really, really important because as soon as you get that label, as soon as people think that you're the kind of person that's just there to bring others down, people don't want to work with anyone like that. And at that stage, that's where your social media is hurting more than helping. So be friendly to people, be polite, be courteous, more people will want to work with you overall. Now let's have a little chat about how to network privately on social media. And again, we must stress, privately is a statement where people might still be able to access your DMs. Nothing is truly private online, so make sure that you're only sharing stuff that you're comfortable with sharing. This is especially for the those of you who are under 18. Networking is a great way of meeting new people, finding new opportunities, but you want to make sure that you're being safe online. If you're in a private DM, you shouldn't be sharing more information there than you would publicly. Don't be sharing personal information with people you don't know. Once you're networking with people and you get to know people a little bit better, you meet them in person potentially when you're working events with them, then they might be able to know a little bit more about you, the same level a friend would um, be able to know about you. But when you're just an online person, if you haven't known them very long, keep things professional and make sure that you're not giving away information that you could be used against you or could be leaked in the future. Set up a professional email address as well um, in order to share with people in a networking space that's separate from your personal one. A couple of reasons to do this. One, people in esports, while it's quite a fun industry to work in, no one really wants to be sending a professional email to XXX, Noob Slayer, 420XXX. It looks bad, it looks bad on resumes, it looks bad when you're giving it to tournament organizers. You want to have a professional email address itself. And also, keeping it separate is gonna be good because it means that people aren't gonna be having access to your private email address, which you use for other stuff. Spamming people or being a nuisance won't win you many friends. If you're in DMs, if you're talking to people, esports is very open. There'll be a lot of people you'd be surprised who are at quite high level in most sectors within esports who are gonna be more than happy to sit down and have a chat with you, whether it be in DM, whether it's a quick call, whether it's just a public chat on something like Twitter. They'll be more than happy to give you advice and help you on your way. It's really, really great that a lot of people will do this. However, there will be some people who are maybe just too busy at the time to be able to help you out. Don't just spam these people. Don't keep messaging and messaging and bothering them because maybe they're just unavailable. Maybe they don't want to talk to you and you're not winning yourself a new friend. You're not doing yourself any favors by pressing on and on and on and trying to be their mate or trying to get advice from them. There are loads of people in esports who'll be willing to give you that advice or to make that connection with you. So if there's one person that you really want to talk to and they're not available, look at people around them at the same kind of level. Look at people in the same kind of sectors because they might be better for you to discuss with. On the other side of things, this kind of builds into that, don't be scared to reach out to other people in esports. Even people at a much higher level than you perceive yourself to be at if you're just coming into it as a student because they will be really willing to help you. A lot of people are often quite flattered if you come to them asking for advice and if you're polite and courteous and you're open with what you want. This doesn't mean that you don't have to do your own research or understand things yourself because you want to be doing all that anyway. If you're going to have success, you want to be able to go through and find these resources yourself. But asking for advice, asking for help, asking for specific things from specific people, you're going to be surprised with how much you can actually get out of that. So never be too afraid to um, contact someone and ask for information. If people really don't want to be contacted, usually their DMs will be closed or they'll have um, a professional way of contacting them that you're not able to do. Last piece of advice here, and this is super important, people often don't consider it. Time zones exist as a thing. If you're contacting people, make sure that you know where they are country-wise or time zone-wise before you get in touch. Because if people have social media on their phone, that's gonna give a notification and you're messaging them at 2 a.m. and you're waking them up and this is from personal experience, ah, don't do it. Just consider where they are. You can often send scheduled messages, so if they're on the other side of the world to you, you can schedule a message for a time that's gonna suit them, and then they'll be able to respond in their own time. So keep that in mind when you're networking, because if you're waking someone up at two o'clock in the morning, they're gonna be less disposed to help you. Those are our basic tips to help you with your personal branding and a little bit of networking on social media. Again, we must stress if you're under the age of 18, 
make sure to go over to the British Esports Association Parents and Carers section, which is going to give you much more information on how to be doing that safely and how you can get your parent or carer involved in this whole process. Because while you're under 18, it doesn't mean you don't have to be networking or you don't have to be building your own brand. There are other things that you need to be considering if you're under the age of 18. But for myself, Will, everyone at Headmarker and the British Esports Association, of course, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.